Hi, everyone. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. We have participants that are joining as we speak, but because we have such a tight schedule and want to fit everyone in and as much information as possible, um, we're going to get started right on time. Uh, my name is Jen Sanders. I'm from Calvert Woodley Fine Wine and Spirits in Washington, D.C. We're very excited for the tasting tonight. It's a in partner, hosted in partnership with the Embassy of Argentina and the Wines of Argentina organization. But I know that we have many participants from all over the country joining tonight, uh, not just CW customers. So welcome, and we are so happy you can join us. Tonight's event will be hosted by uh, or emceed by Veronica Castoria, which is who is the USA and Canada area manager for the Wines of Argentina. And before introducing our special guests, we just have a few housekeeping items to go over for the tasting. Because we have over 200 guests signed up for this, um, we changed this event to a webinar format. So everyone will be muted. You'll only see the, the videos of the speakers um, and the panelists. Uh, you are able to submit your questions via the Q&A chat, and we'll do our absolute best to address any questions you have. However, due to the amount of information we'll be covering, if we aren't able to answer your questions, please send us an email after the presentation and we will absolutely get back to you. Uh, a little bit about Malbec World Day, which Veronica will get more into, but it's a global initiative created by Wines of Argentina that positions Argentine Malbec in the world and celebrates the success of Argentina's national wine industry. Malbec is one of the most popular uh, sections of our store, and we were so excited to be approached by them for this event and think it'll be really fun. And obviously, it resonates with a lot of people, so we're so happy to have so many guests um, sign up for it. Uh, not only are we tasting some delicious Malbec today, but we are going to have four esteemed owners and winemakers from the wineries to walk us through each of the wines we'll be tasting. The first wine we'll be tasting is the Luigi Bosca DOC Single Vineyard Malbec. Uh, the person, our, our special guest is Pablo Cuneo. He is the head winemaker at Bodega Luigi Bosca. It was founded in 1901 and is one of Argentina's, or is Argentina's oldest family. They are considered pioneers in Mendoza's winemaking history and the Arizo family collaborated actively to create the Luján de Cuyo, Cuyo denomination de origin the only DOC established in Argentina, proudly bringing it in line with other DOCs worldwide. Uh, to be labeled a DOC, a wine must adhere to strict regulations. The vine must hail from a single vineyard, which we will have, and average 50 years or older. So we'll be tasting their single vineyard Malbec from this subregion. Uh, our next wine that we will taste is Zucar Zucardi Q Malbec. Jose Zucardi is the second generation winemaker and owner of Familia Zucardi. And he put Zucardi on the world map in the 80s and the 90s. And he's also just uh, such a, I mean, we've had the pleasure of having a dinner with him in, in DC and he's just such a pleasure to, to be around. And we're so happy that he's here and he'll, he'll be speaking to you. His drive and tenacity were passed down to his children. It's all a family affair. Uh, they all play major roles in the family business and they focus mainly on sustainability and organic winemaking. Jose and his son, Sebastian, invested heavily in the Uco Valley. Uh, believing they could produce top quality wines based on the terroir and the high altitude vineyards, which they have done. And we will be tasting their Q Malbec, which is really delicious. And um, Dr. Laura Catena should be joining us. She's from Bodega Catena Zapata. She's going to try to rush in and then she has to rush out. Uh, we have Pablo Piccolo also from Catena in case there's some issue with the scheduling. But Laura Catena is a fourth generation wine, wine vintner a uh, physician, author, and a great friend of CW. She comes very often or had before COVID. Her father, Nicolas Catena Zapata, is often referred to as the Robert Mondavi of Argentina, or at least in the States. He helped facilitate the ascent of Argentine Malbec onto the world stage. And Laura gra graduated from Harvard University and has a medical doctor's degree from Stanford University. She serves as a managing director for Bodega Catena Zapata and her own Luca Wines in Mendoza. She's also a practicing emergency medicine physician in San Francisco. She basically does it all and is my hero. And we are excited to taste her Paraje Altamira Malbec today. And last but not least, we have Thibaut Delmot. He is the chief winemaker of, at Bodega Colomé. He uh, grew up in Burgundy, France, and he arrived in Argentina in 2004 and had not 
really had much experience with Argentine wines. That all changed when he fell in love with the region of Salta and started to work with Donald Hess at Bodega Colomé. Colomé was started in 1831. It's the oldest continuously run winery in Argentina. Salta is also known for their high altitude vineyards and Thibault actually produces a wine from one of the highest vineyards in the world. We will be tasting their estate Malbec, which I had read is one of his favorites um, and actually was one of his favorite and kind of got him the job with uh, Mr. Hess. Um, it's a blend of their different vineyards, all from different altitudes. And without, I know that was a lot of information and hopefully everything will be a little bit more slowed down, but I just wanted to fit as much as I could in my, my slot. But <laughs> without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to another special guest that we have on this call, Mr. Jorge Arguello. Uh, he is the ambassador of Argentina to the United States, and um, he will give you a welcome and introduce Veronica a little bit more in depth, and I hope you all have a wonderful tasting. Thank you. Shall I now? Okay, okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. For me, it is an honor and a pleasure to be sharing this experience with you today. Celebrating Malbec World Day, and specifically the success of Malbec Argentino, is full of significance, it's full of emotions. Traditionally, we celebrated Malbec World Day at the embassy with hundreds of guests and many, many wineries and promoted some of the most distinguished flavors. But as you know, the pandemic forced that as to change many things in our lives and also in the celebration of Malbec Day. But even though we are far apart, we have extended our outreach throughout the United States. And in a way, we stayed connected through this difficult time. I want uh, first and foremost to extend my gratitude to our partners and co-organizers here today, Calvert Woodley, and wines of Argentina. Special thanks to Michael Sands, Jen Sanders, and of course, Veronica Caturia from Wines of Argentina for the US and Canada market. I am honored and humbled to have today four of the world's most recognized winemakers from Argentina. Really proud of it. I think this is a unique opportunity for everyone present, present today here to listen to them firsthand and have the possibility to interact with them in such a close way. I want to thank the amazing lineup of Argentinian winemakers, Laura Catena from Bodegas Catena Zapata, Jose Zucardi from Familia Zucardi, Pablo Cuneo from Bodega Luigi Bosca, and Thibaut Delmot from Bodega Colomé. I know this day you, 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 you four are highly demanded worldwide. So I feel grateful and honored that you are present here today with us to celebrate. Today, you represent Argentina and you are our ambassadors around and across the globe. And in this particular case, to the United States. Behind uh, this celebration is our national wine industry's success and a history of many hardworking families, a culture, an identity, a passion. Our viticulture is the story of our wine growing tradition, a story where innovation and tradition go hand in hand to create new paths. As our history, uh, as our industry reached a level of maturity, so is our relationship with the US market. Now we can talk about the Malbec styles and bring different experiences that portray our flagship grapes authenticity. I encourage every one of you to take profit from the masters present here today. It is a unique opportunity to explore, discover, and to learn, and of course, to enjoy. 
So cheers and to all of you and Veronica, the Zoom is yours. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Well, welcome uh, to everyone. I'm not gonna say again, well, I'm gonna go right to it. I wanna set the stage for you uh, to what uh, is Argentina. So if you give me a brief minute, we're gonna take a little journey. Sorry, one moment. Up, up. If I can get my presentation on there. Do, do, do. Okay. That was our little trip to Argentina. So this is kind of to set the stage for what we're going to be doing in about two minutes. So as I mentioned, as Jen mentioned, Malbec Full Day was a global initiative created by Wines of Argentina to bring Malbec Argentino to the forefront uh, and to celebrate the wine industry. But in order to understand why it's celebrated today on April 17th, just a little bit of history. So to start off, Malbec or Cant is originally from the region of Cahors in southwest of France, about 100 miles east of Bordeaux. Cot, as it was known there, was produced during the times of the Roman Empire, so it has thousands of years of history. During this time, Cot was actually enjoyed by the elites and the royals. Now, later it was used as a blending grape in Bordeaux, but never really as a monovital in Bordeaux, but that's where it got most of the popularity. Now, Malbec was actually introduced in Argentina in 1853 by a French agronomer named Michel Pouget. Now, why is Michel Pouget important? He was actually hired by the Argentine national government to carry out the management of the Agricultural Quinta of Mendoza, which is a research center, a research center and agronomy school. And the goal was for him to develop um, the French or introduce the new varietals, French noble grapes, including Malbec, um, as a means to enhance the Argentine wine industry. The appointment of Michel Pouget happened to take place on April 17, 1853. So for us in Argentina, the 17th of April is not only a symbol of the transformation of Argentina's uh, wine industry, but also the starting point for the development of Malbec. Now, fast forward 10 years, the world gets hit by phylloxera. Why is this important? Phylloxera wiped out all the vines of France, uh, basically the world. Phylloxera is a root louse that really affects, uh, touches the vine, saps the, um, affects the sap out of the vine, eventually killing it. However, um, because Argentina has natural barriers, we had the Atlantic to the west and the Andes to the east, phylloxera never uh, hit, hit our homes. So we have what we can consider the original Malbec because what happened in France was that they could no longer use the same vines, they were not thriving, so they had to graft the American stock to their root stock. So Argentina, we have the original Malbec or what they refer to as Cot. So, Towards the end of the 19th century, we see a lot of immigration from Italian and French uh, descendants who actually were developing uh, the wine industry and were really working with Malbec. And what they noticed was that Malbec really took uh, particularly adapted particularly well to the rugged terrains um, and, and really began producing better wines than had been produced in Cahors. So today we produce Malbec all over Argentina from north to south. Um, today, we're gonna to be tasting with our exceptional winemakers, uh, wines from um, uh, Salta region and wines from Mendoza or, or Cusho region. So 
without further ado, this is going to be our lineup for today. You're not going to hear me speak too much unless I have questions coming in and questions I want to make the winemakers. But we're going to start out uh, with Luigi Bosca, and we're going to have Pablo Cuneo talk to us, uh, give us a history about Luigi Bosca, um, history about uh, his winemaking, and also walk through us uh, through our wine tasting of the Luigi Bosca DOC. Now back. So Pablo, if you'd like to share with us. Uh, yes, of course. Well, thank you, Veronica. Thank you uh, for uh, um, Calvert Woodley, the Embassy, and Wines of Argentina for hosting us today. Thank you for all the people present in this presentation. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm honored, I'm, I'm very happy to, to, to present and to represent in some point Argentina today, as uh, the, the ambassador uh, says before. Um, and also to celebrate uh, such an important day for us, for Argentinian wine family, uh, which is a, the Malbec World, World Day. Um, I always say that Malbec has, um, uh, we, we, we've been very lucky for having Malbec uh, to have a, a grape that can uh, represent Argentina in the world uh, to become our flagship. It's not easy, it's not simple, not many countries has uh, this opportunity. So I, I think we've been very lucky. Um, and I always like to say that Malbec chose us, not, not the other way around, uh, because of the, the, the exceptional adaptation that it has to our weather, our climate. Uh, and also it's a very plastic, as uh, Veronica present, uh, is spread from the northern Argentina to the south to Patagonia, expressing really, really very, very uh, clear uh, the, the character of each terroir. Uh, this is another important um, thing with Malbec, that, that it, it is very transparent, so it can express uh, clearly the different expression of, of the different uh, terroirs. Today, we, uh, I, we, we chose uh, Luigi Bosca DOC to, to present today uh, because it's, um, I like to present this wine like the kind of Malbec that conquered the world uh, two decades ago, because uh, the, the Malbec that we start exporting in the decade of 90s and, and 2000 were uh, the Malbec from Luján de Cuyo region. Uh, in this case, uh, the wine come from a, 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 a vineyard a place in Vistalba at uh, 1000 meters of, uh, of elevation. It's a single vineyard coming from, from Vistalba. And uh, the DOC uh, Luján de Cuyo has uh, some rules that are, uh, are um, think to, to keep the quality and to keep the, the, the character of, of uh, that region. Uh, Veronica has mentioned some of them, all vineyards, uh, sorry, Jean has mentioned some of the, the rules in the introduction um, with low yields, uh, all vineyards, um, then uh, um, classical vertical um, trellis system, um, high density in the, in the vineyards, more than 5,500 vines per, per hectare. Uh, these are some of the rules that are concerning the, the, in the vineyard. In the winery, uh, the wine has to go into the market uh, two years after the harvest. Uh, it has been uh, aged at least one year in, in, in oak barrels. Uh, in this case, this uh, DOC has been aged for 14 months in, in oak barrel, uh, second and third use barrel. Um, partial new new uh, barrel, uh, and then uh, and with a classical uh, maceration. That's uh, the rules are are, are really um, simple, basic, but they are um, thought to to keep the quality of the wine. The the DOC was established in eighteen in nineteen eighty nine, uh, thirty years ago, uh, and the first wine that was uh, sold in the market was uh, the in 1991, uh, we are making this wine since that time. Uh, we, we started selling in, in that uh, in that uh, uh, year. Uh, well, but which is a characteristic of uh, of the uh, this Malbec or the Malbec in general from Luján de Cuyo? Uh, Luján de Cuyo has a strong character of uh, red fruit character, which is a typical character of uh, Malbec, full of uh, plums. Uh, and uh, with some spicy notes, which are also uh, appear in, in, in this area of, uh, of uh, Luján de Cuyo. Vistalba is placed in the highest area of, of, of Luján, in the north bank of uh, Mendoza River. Uh, it's a winkler 
Winkler 3, Winkler 4 uh, classification of, of, uh, of uh, weather. Um, and well, the expression there, the Malbec expresses as a red fruit character and full of uh, fruit and full of uh, sweetness in the, in the palate. The tannins uh, in that area and, and overall in the old vineyards um, ripen completely and have a, a nice uh, softness and, and sweetness in the palate. This is the main characteristic of Malbec from, uh, from uh, Luján de Cuyo in general, but particularly from, from, this, uh, from this finca. Also can appear some, some floral uh, notes, but uh, the, the main characteristic is, uh, is this, uh, this plant character and some spicy, spicy notes. Other characteristic of this area in Vistalba, uh, which is in the north bank of Mendoza River, our finca is placed in the second terrace, uh, so it's very close to Mendoza River, so the soils are quite, uh, quite poor. Uh, very poor in, in, in organic matter uh, with a nice uh, drainage of water. So the vines uh, achieve a, a natural balance, a natural uh, balance between uh, the leaves and the, and the fruit. So we can achieve a, a, nice, uh, a nice concentration. In average, the yield we use to, to produce uh, this wine around uh, 10 to uh, seven to eight tons per hectare. Uh, that help us to, to express all the, all, all the character of, uh, of this uh, region. Uh, this is a brief presentation of, of, the, of this uh, Luigi Bosca DOC. Um, in, the, in the next uh, slide, you, you can have an, an image of the, of the Finca. This is, uh, if you, can you pass, uh, Veronica? Well, here, can, can you see? Okay, but, 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 uh, sorry, sorry. This is uh, this one. I have this there, one. Right there, this yes. One. <laughs> No. <laughs> oh, that you only get, I only have a, I, I only have a, these slides here. This one I can zoom in. Uh, on this one, this one, this yeah. one. Yeah. This, <laughs> this, this is an, a, a nice image that uh, there you can see. We, we always say in Argentina that we, we uh, grow vineyards and vines uh, in the foothill of the Andes. And this is literally, you can see there in this photograph, uh, this is a very classical uh, view of uh, Luján de Cuyo, where you have the, the pre-Andes, in the front, and then behind you can see the, the Plata chain. It's a, it's a mountain that belongs to the to the frontal Andes, uh, and this is a, the, the characteristic uh, landscape there. Uh, on the on the left of, of the, the image goes uh, the, the Mendoza River, and this uh, finca is based on the on the second terrace of, of that uh, river. Um, so the the pre Andes make. Uh, make a kind of protection from, from the cool air from the Andes. That's why the, the Winkler classification of uh, this area of Luján is a uh, Winkler 3, Winkler 4. Uh, if uh, you don't have, if we won't have the pre-Andes could be cooler because of the altitude is 1000 meters above sea level. But uh, this uh, topography characteristic protects and, and creates uh, a, a microclimate that um, make uh, it's a little bit warmer than other areas like Uco Valley, south uh, southwest from 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 the, from Luján. Uh, that's why the wines uh, develops a lot of uh, elegance, sweetness, and, and soft uh, kind of tannins. This is a well a, a brief presentation of uh, of the wine. Beautiful wine. You know, I, I noticed that you use. Uh, French barrels, but you use a part new uh, and, and part uh, second use barrels. Why, is that, why, why, why do you choose that combination and what we, kind of attributes does it give to the wine? We, we are trying to, to um, show the, the fruit expression. We want uh, the fruit to be the, the protagonist of the character of the, of the wine. Uh, and that's why we, we are using uh, mainly second and third use uh, and slightly 10%, 15% of, of uh, produce in order to have a good balance between the fruit and the, and the, and, and the oak. I always say that the oak is just a, a tool that um, helps the wine to evolve, helps the, the wine to age and support in some point the, the fruit and the character in the, in the time. But the, the main character uh, must be the, the, the fruit expression that in, in Luján de Cuyo in general is, uh, is about uh, plums, red fruit character, a slightly spicy, uh, like a tobacco leaf, uh, which is characteristic of, from this finca, uh, and, it, and the palate, a, a very round and, and soft and elegant uh, texture. 
You know, this is a beautiful wine. Again, I think we all need the asado uh, right now. Uh, <laughs> thank you. We will come back to you, Pablo. Uh, the next, uh, I would love to talk to Senor Alberto, Jose Alberto uh, from Bodegas uh, Sucardi. Uh, we're gonna, he's gonna, if he could please, Jose, unmute your mic and tell us about your family history uh, at Sucardi and as well um, as the, your evolution of wine and um, last but not least, the wine that we'll be tasting today, which is the Sucardi Cumalbec. Thank you, Veronica. Thanks uh, everybody that made possible this uh, opportunity to interchange information and to be a little bit closer. All this time in pandemia make us stay what is good at this time of the year because we are in during, uh, during the harvest at this time. We are a 100% family owned company. I'm the second generation. My father founded the company. He was a civil engineer doing irrigation systems in the region. And as a way to show his irrigation system, he started with a vineyard in 1963 and he became in love with the vineyard. But the, the real, reality is that Mendoza is a desert in high altitude. And from the province, we just irrigate three and a half percent of the surface. We don't have more water for irrigation. It, it makes the, the region very particular because it's a desert in high altitude next to the Andean mountains. The, the Andes block the humidity air coming from the Pacific Ocean. We are far away from the Atlantic. It rains in Mendoza six or seven inches per, per year. And the only water we have for irrigation come from the melting of the snow on top of the Andes. But it's as, as I said, this we can irrigate just a very small portion of the of the province. The, the wine I want to, to talk today is a, from, the, from a range called Sucardi Cube. And I tell you a little bit the story of this range. We started uh, in 1997. We produced the first Sucardi Q that we launched in the market in 1999. It was not a Malbec. At this time, the, the first wine we did was a Tempranillo. That is also an old variety in our region after we belong to, to Spain. Then it was a variety that is, uh, was cultivated in Mendoza from the from a long time. But the, the idea in Q was it was the first wine that have our last name, was the first Sucardi wine. And in 1976, in 1996, sorry, I started choosing the best part of our vineyards and also the best workers in order to produce the best varietal wine we could produce. We had, a, a, since then, we did an evolution, and now this wine, the wine we are going to try, is uh, the one maker is my son, Sebastian. In 2000, Sebastian joined the company partially. He started uh, during, during the time he was at the university, he was working, and he was in love with the Uco Valley. Uco Valley is a region that is in the central part of Mendoza and is the western uh, part of Mendoza, closer to the, to the Andes. It's also the highest altitude uh, region where we cultivate in Mendoza. Sebastian was really passionate about the, the Uco Valley. We started producing uh, this wine there and we, we, we like to say that uh, the Sucardi Q is a wine that express a region. It's a, it's a wine that is, a, we say, vino de región. Uh, it shows the character of the Malbec in the Uco Valley. And we took uh, two specific areas to produce this Malbec. Uh, 
you, you are looking the, the winery we built uh, between 19, uh, between 2013 and 2016. It's a winery that is made all with material from the region. It's all made with uh, stones, with uh, sand, it's concrete. It's all materials from the region, from the Tunusan River. And even the vegetations in the garden is all vegetation, vegetation from the mountain. We try to do wines that are the expression of the region. And Sucardi Q Malbec, we, we like to, to do a wine that is a real expression of the Uco Valley. Here we, we use grapes coming from two regions. Uh, one is Paraje Altamira and the other is Chacalles. Paraje Altamira is in San Carlos because the Uco Valley, uh, there are three departments. Mendoza is divided in 17 departments. Three of them are the Uco Valley. And the departments are San Carlos, Tunuyán, and Tupungato. In the case of the Sucardi Q Malbec, we are using grapes from Paraje Altamira. It's a region that is uh, the form, uh, all the soils there are alluvial soils, are formed by the alluvial fan of the Tunuyan River. It's a big alluvial cone or alluvial fan, uh, big, really big stones, medium size or big stones. And the characteristic, uh, the main characteristic of this soil is that uh, it's a high content of uh, chalk, like a, a high content of calcium carbonate. When you see the stones, all the stones are surrounded for, for a layer of calcium carbonate. It looks like a, when the, the mountain was covered with big glaciers in certain millions of years ago, and suddenly these glaciers melt because the change of the temperature in the planet and it uh, allowed the formation of most of the soils where we cultivate in Mendoza. This area, uh, Paraje Altamira, is really a, the, the, was a strong alluvial movement and the proof of that is the size of the stones. You have the stones in the region that are, all the stones around is one thing that uh, show you an uh, alluvial soil. When you see that stone that came from the mountain rolling down uh, is, is because it was an alluvial movement. But you can find there stones that are 20 or 25 uh, tons, uh, huge stones that were moved by the strength of the of the water, the the the, the altitude there is uh, around three thousand seven hundred meters in Paraje, uh, sorry feet in Paraje Altamira three thousand seven hundred feet. Altitude means um, two main things: you have less atmosphere. It means you have more more sunlight. Also, the, the you have lower temperature. As soon as we go 100 meters up in altitude, we have one degree centigrade less in, in, in average in the, in the temperature, in the average uh, temperature of the region. Uh, Paraje Altamira also has, uh, as, as in general Mendoza has, is a, a, a very sunny days, more than 300 sunny days a, a year. And we have a, a warm days, and cool nights. This region, because the altitude, the nights are, are cooler. And it is very interesting because you have the sugar in the grapes, but also you have the, the, the natural acidity because the, the nights are, are fresh. The other region where we use grapes in this Sucardi uh, Malbec is Los Chacalles. Los Chacalles is a region that is a little bit northern than Paraje Altamira. It's a different formation of the soils. There are smaller alluvial fans and it's a superposition of alluvial movements. Then you can see more sandy and loamy soils 
and the stones are uh, smaller than in Paraje Altamira, not in all the regions you have uh, calcium carbonate or, or calcareous, but, but there are some areas where you have also uh, calcareous uh, soil. Uh, we, we pick the grapes separately in each region and we do the fermentation uh, each uh, separately because we want to pick the grapes at the right time. One thing that makes the Malbec great in our region is that we have a long season to ripe the grapes. When you see the time between the, the flowering and the harvest, is around 150 days. When you go to the northeast of France, in Cahors, or these regions, they have 100 days or maybe 110 days in a very good year. I think it makes the, our Malbecs uh, ripe very well and also have a, a, not just the sugar, also the tannins are, are soft and round. In the case of the, of the um, 2019 harvest, that is the, the year of the wine you, you are tasting, it was a very nice year. It was a, the, the, weather, the weather was a lower temperature than, than the average, but was a, a dry year. The grapes ripe very step by step, very slow. It was really, really a, a year where, where we have a very good expression of our wines. I think the, the combination of both areas, Paraje Altamira and, and Chacales, is very good because Paraje Altamira gives the juicy, the, the texture of the wines. Soils with a lot of calcium carbonates, with choke, with choke uh, gives that uh, texture, salinity on the tongue that is very particular. It's not the flavor, it's the texture. Uh, when uh, in Chacales, it's very typical, the aromas, uh, very nice aromas that comes from, from the surrounding natural vegetation you have, where you have a lot of tomillo, jarilla, and the aromas of los Chacales is, is uh, very prominent. I think the combination of both areas uh, allowed us to produce a, a, a very good expression of the Malbec. In the vinification, I, I explained you that we did uh, separately in order to pick the grapes at the right time, but also we do the fermentation in concrete vats. These vats have, uh, have not uh, any cover inside, uh, around vats, uh, different capacities we have uh, from 2,000 liters till 10,000 liters. And we do all the, that fermentation in these vats that have a thick walls, they are 15 centimeters. It's very stable, very friendly with the, with the wine. And, it's a, a, and then we do the aging. Part of the, of the, of the wine we do in concrete vats that they, they don't have a, a epoxy inside and it allows to have some uh, interchange of oxygen and it's very good for the aging of the wine. And the other part of the wine, we do the uh, aging in barrels, French oak barrels, but we use 500 liters barrels, not toasted. We want that the expression, the real expression of the wine comes from the vineyard. Uh, we the aging process, where gives the possibility to stabilize the wine and to produce some micro oxygenation, but the character of the wine must come from the terroir. Uh, Sebastian, my, my son, started studying vinification methods and the, and the different regions in the Uco Valley. I, I joke him because I said in the last year he spent more time underground than on the surface, but the reality is that uh, we, we love to do wines that talk about the place where they where they, we produce the grapes. The main, the main objective of us in, in all our wines is to do terroir-driven wines. I think it's more or less, uh, um, we, we don't want to, the, the grapes overripe. 
we we love in the in the in that wines the freshness we think is the characteristic of the wines we can produce in the Uco Valley are fresh are elegant and we 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 really think that it is the real style of the Malbec from Argentina. I hope you enjoy and I totally open to all the questions you like to do. We, we did have a question, Jose. Uh, the question is, what would you pair this wine with? I think uh, as an Argentinian, you know, yeah. <laughs> we pair the, that wine with a nice barbecue with a lot, with a lot of meat. Yes. But I think it, because this wine has a that freshness in the palate, it's, it's a wine that got match with with many different type of foods, because the the, the if, when you have that uh, freshness in the palate, the, the wine uh, clean the mouth and makes you feel better the food and and this uh, in our culture wine and food match together because uh, that that effect and I think this uh, this juiciness this uh, freshness uh, makes this wine a very gastronomic wines that can match with many foods but of course if I have to choose one I said uh, an Argentinian barbecue ah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you Jose thank you we're going to get back to you if we can uh, uh, once we get through uh, the other two speakers so uh, the next person we're going to have is uh, Dr. Laura Catena Welcome. And uh, as I, we have started, basically the floor is yours to tell us your history, uh, history about Bodegas Catena Zapata, you as a fourth generation winemaker, and to talk about uh, the wine that we're going to have, which is Paraje de Altamira 2018 Malbec. But the floor is yours, Laura. Well, uh, thank you very much, Veronica. And uh, hello, Pablo, Jose, Jen. The two Pablos and Tipo. <laughs> so great to see Tipo. He's all the way from Salta. Um, hey, uh, Veronica, do you can you stop sharing so that? Um, of course. Yes. Give me one second. Uh, but let me get there. Whoop, uh, one second. I, I have. Uh, give me a brief moment here. Got to get another. I just. I've gotten so tired of. Of. Um, oh, I want to see all my friends. I'm, I'm yeah. coming. Yeah. There we go. Great. Great. Uh, so well. First of all, thank you so much for having me. I. I was supposed to be driving to Los Angeles today, but then when I heard of your invitation, I said, I, I must be here. And I, I'm actually coming from a, a Malbec World Day event. Uh, that's why I was a little bit late. I had to be driving, but it, I, I, I don't know what the, the rest of the team from Argentina thinks, but I don't think we were talking at this event today that there is another variety that has a bigger day, right? Because, you know, there's a Chardonnay day, there's a Cabernet Sauvignon day, but I think the Argentinians, we take it very seriously, the Malbec World Day. And um, like the social media is going crazy. So everybody, uh, you know, please take a photo of the wine you're drinking or make it a quote from Jose or Pablo or Thibault or myself uh, and, and, you know, get active because we need all your help to tell the world about our beautiful um, native well, it's French, but uh, now Argentine uh, yeah. variety Malbecs. I have to be careful about French things now that Thibault is on the call. Normally I can get away with murder, but Thibault will, will make sure I don't uh, make anything up. But, uh, but anyhow, first of all, it's so exciting to be with this illustrious group of producers from Argentina because this is la creme de la creme, guys. Uh, you know, these, these are some of the most important producers in Argentina. And I admire your wine so much. Uh, you know, Pablo is talking about Luján de Cuyo. That is like the birthplace of Argentine wine. It's where our winery is. And it's where the first export wines came from. It has these beautiful clay soils that have a refreshing effect on the wines. And, and the wines from there are so different uh, from the wines, uh, you know, in other parts of Mendoza. And definitely very different from the wines of Salta that Thibault is representing. Uh, Thibault, you are representing a wine from Salta, right? Yes, okay, good. Uh, so um, that's very exciting. And then Jose Sucardi, I have a very big question for you and you can unmute yourself if you want because, so I started working with my father, um, you know, in the, in the 1990s. And I can tell you that Jose Sucardi, he is like a man with like multiple clones because he managed to be everywhere. 
And uh, I once figured out how that was possible because I was on a, waiting for an airplane to, to leave in, in, in Bordeaux in France. And, you know, they were calling the names of the people. And I thought, well, I'll stay out here, you know, and I don't know, look at my phone. Like I was reading a book. I was not working. And Jose Sugardi is sitting there. He's like got all his papers, his computer in like three seats and he's working. And he almost missed the flight because he was so busy. And so that's how he manages to work. But I have another question for him, um, which is, <laughs> How did you manage, how did your son manage to get you to do this call? Because I am unable to get my father to do anything. He knows how to use Zoom, but he refuses. So Jose, I, your son is one of my heroes. I think he is so brilliant. He's a great speaker, amazing winemaker. You know, he's, he does so much good for Argentina, but I admire him even more that he managed to get you to get on Zoom. So tell me, what's, what's your son's secret? I think the secret, Laura, it's a pleasure to see you. And you have a good memory because it happened, what you tell, many years ago. I think it's, I, I, I love to work in family and companies because one generation can build on top of the previous generation. Uh, our days, I share my children projects. And then it's, it's, uh, the, the, the situation is totally the opposite. My, I am very pleased to become part of my children project. And then Sebastian is leading all the vinification and all the yeah. process. And, and I think uh, I, what, I, what I love in the family companies is that the roles of each generation change by the time. And, and in our case, we, we run in the opposite. He started, he but the company is totally different now because it's more the view of the younger generation mm -hmm. and my role changed. I am part now from the younger people projects. You, and, you, work, and you I work, think, work for him. You work for him now. Exactly, I mean, exactly. <laughs> but, you, but you know, in the family and companies, and you, as you know very well, because you are a, a family, completely family owned company, we can work with long-term projects because we are not thinking in the next two years. And for wine, it is fantastic because uh, the projects needs 10 years or 15 years. Or, and when you work in fathers and, and children, it is possible. Then um, I think it is uh, the main secret to, to keep the family uh, and, and the family, the real family in life is uh, objectives and values, not just the blood. Well, I totally agree with you. And um, I can't wait for the day that I work for my children. I, I, uh, my father supposedly works for me, but he doesn't like to do Zoom things. He does everything else. So I'm going to tell him, Jose Alberto, that you were here. Maybe I, he feel a, a little bad. Uh, but uh, but uh, I, I want to say also for Jose Alberto that he has um, a daughter that is an amazing woman who runs all their hospitality and and. You know, he does, I know for a fact that his whole family works at the winery and that's amazing. And I take my hat off. And, and there's another story actually to do with this wine, with the Paraje Altamira, um, which, um, you know, Jose Alberto, you pretty much told everything about Altamira, but you didn't tell this one story that I'm going to get to tell. So this is, a, as, as Jose Alberto said, a very special place. I actually have, whoop, okay. Fortunately, I hadn't opened the bottle. Um, so here's the, one of these stones that Jose Alberto was talking about. Look at this calcium carbonate. These are alluvial stones. And what happens is that the vine has to go down with the root system, with all these little roots into the stones and it absorbs nutrients and it's a little stressed because just like people, the vine wants a little stress, not too much, but a little stress helps people. And uh, this is a very special place with these beautiful soils. And it makes a Malbec, as, as Jose Alberto said, that um, you know, has you know, the power of this cool climate area, the Uca Valley, with very smooth tannins. And you know, Pablo was talking about Luján de Cuyo, more the red fruits. You know, it's, it's like a more classic wine. It actually makes you think you know, Bordeaux even. Like those are the wines of Luján de Cuyo, also some great Cabernet Sauvignon there. The Malbec from the Uca Valley is more on the Pinot Noir direction. It's really floral, aromatic, it's got violets, uh, but it's also got quite a bit of power and these very smooth tannins. But the story I want to tell you about Paraje Altamira 
is uh, a story that connects our families, uh, you know, the Gardena family, the Sugardi family, and with Shandon and many producers in the area that, um, you know, about 10 years ago, somebody had trademarked the name of the region. And, you know, we had kind of decided like, okay, let them use that name, we'll use another name. Uh, but then we decided to get together with other producers from the area and present the study, the geological study, the climate study of Paraje Altamira, this region that makes such special wines, uh, to present it to the National Institute and have it declared an appellation, which we call Indicación Geográfica. This is our word for appellation. And actually, we collaborated with other producers in the, in the area, including the Sucardi family, and we, we won the appellation. And now this appellation exists thanks to this work between many producers in the area. And, and you know, I think if there's one thing that I love about Argentina is that, of course, we all compete with each other. We all want to make the, the best wine. But when we work together, um, we have this common goal, which is to elevate Argentine wine. And Paraje Altamira is, is really an example of this great work together. And, um, oh, I am, I wanted to tell the history of Malbec, but I think I'm totally, can I do it really quick? Okay, Thibault, I'm gonna do one minute version. So Malbec, why is Malbec so important? Because it's this grape that almost went extinct in France. So it was famous, you know, it was described at the time of the, of the Roman legionnaire, uh, legionnaires when they went through Cahors. Then it's known at the time of Eleanor of Aquitaine where she drinks it when she, you know, she marries the English king after marrying the French king. And then it becomes one of the most important varieties in the Bordeaux blend. And, you know, I, I've read some writings that say that it was a minor variety. It was not. There was actually more Malbec planted than Cabernet Sauvignon in the 18th and 19th century in Bordeaux. So it was a very, very important part of the blend. And it was used for color, richness of aromas, and smoothness because Cabernet Sauvignon was so tannic that it needed the smoothness of the Malbec. But then it was this very delicate grape. And they had all the, this frost and they had cold weather and they had grafting and they decided it was too complicated and too delicate. And so when it came to Argentina, it came as this very famous grape, but in France, it almost disappeared. You know, today you have more being planted in, in Caos, like you said, Veronica, in your introduction. So this is this survivor grape that basically is super famous, then almost goes extinct and now rises again from Argentina. So I think it is the variety in the world with the most interesting history. And I think that's possibly why Malbec World Day is, is so important. So Thibault, I'm so sorry, I went so long. Um, and, and one little thing is Thibault, some of our cuttings of Malbec are planted in Colomé and it is possibly the most beautiful place in the world. Uh, Thibault's, the winery Colomé, please everybody, it takes a long time to get there. You have to drive for like five hours. It's totally worth it. So. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Thibault, she gave you the floor. It's all yours. Please tell us about Bodegas Colomé. Well, that's it, Laura. Say everything. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, hi to everybody. Thank you very much for organizing this. I'm uh, I'm very proud to represent uh, Salta in this in this event, and uh, also very proud to share with. Uh, very well-known and famous winery from, uh, from Argentina. So we spoke a lot about Mendoza. Uh, we are from Salta. Salta is only 3% of the superficy of vineyard of Argentina. It's a very little, uh, little uh, denomination of Argentina. And it's far away from Mendoza. Actually, it's uh, more than 1,000 miles north from, uh, from Mendoza and 1,000 miles um, sorry, west from, uh, from Buenos Aires. We are very close to Chilean border and Bolivian border, basically on the Tropic of Capricorn. So uh, to grow a vineyard at uh, this latitude, we really have to go in high altitude. Uh, so all the Calchaqui Valley, where are all the, the vineyard of, of Salta are from 1,700 meters to uh, 3,000 meters. And particularly Colomé, we have four different farms in four different terroirs at four different altitudes. 1,700 meters, which is 6,000 feet, 2,300, 7,500 feet, 2,600, 8,500 feet, and to the maxima at 3,100 meters, 10,200 feet. So it's a very a big diversity of terroir, of altitude, and also in the same time uh, of, uh, of uh, the kind of soil and the kind of, of Malbec. 
also part of the of the history of, of Colomé, that's one of the oldest winery in activity uh, from Argentina. We exist since 1831. And what is very interesting that uh, even the Malbec arrived with uh, Aimé Pouget uh, in Mendoza in 1853. Uh, the first Malbec arrived in Colomé a couple of years later. It was the owner of uh, of uh, Colomé, Sassion, uh, Ascension Isasmendi, who traveled to Bordeaux and came back with the first plant of Malbec uh, of, of Colomé and most likely the first plant of, of Salta province. So it's, we are very lucky to have uh, this uh, strong history also here in, in Colomé and the, uh, on the own rootstock pre Philoxera Malbec and they're still producing. And also from this very old vineyard, we make our own little um, green, uh, uh, we multiply this, this plant and now we have a third of the vineyard on our own, own roots. Part of this vineyard, like you're absolutely right, uh, Laura, we have four hectares planted with your cuts and uh, one of the best Malbec of, uh, of Colomé. And uh, this, this wine, the Colomé State, is, I would say, is a great ambassador of Salta province because it's, it's a, a blend of four Malbec from four different altitudes and four different terroirs. One thing really fantastic with, uh, with Malbec, and Pablo told it to say this at the beginning, it's very uh, versatile, very plastic. He adapt very well to, uh, to our terroir here in, in Argentina. It's much more difficult in France because uh, it, it, well, it's, uh, it doesn't like cool temperature during the flooring. There is a lot of problem of poor set, couleur. And here, because we are much more continental, close to the, to the Andes and the drier, uh, drier uh, weather, we haven't got this problem. That's a one, also one of the, the why the, the Malbec is so so good in Argentina. And uh, so in this in this Colomé state, we have the blend of this of those four uh, different altitude. The lower altitude for us at 1,700 meters will give more the ripeness, red fruit, and very sweet tannins. In this wine, the, really the backbone of this wine is the Colomé farm. Uh, we're speaking at 2,400 meters, 7,500 feet. It's uh, rich in clay, alluvional. It's a very complex soil, and the clay really help for the mouth feeling of the wine. In the same time, uh, a lot of uh, quite stony, so a lot of uh, fruity and spiciness to really give the, the volume of the wine. And after this, we have a farm named El Arenal, which means the sandy place. It's at 2,600 meters. It's a farmer too that discovered Mr. S in, in uh, early 2000. You, you have to imagine a flat area at 2,600 meters and no agriculture at all. Never, never nobody plant in, in single plant of vineyard in this area. And uh, Mr. S discovered the water, uh, make a pendle with his ring and he find the water, make a drill. Everybody will say it's crazy, a loco res. It's impossible, they know there's no water and they find water and we start planting vineyard up there. We have 45 hectares in this farm. And since it's very sandy, of course, it will be more on the fruit side. The, the sandy, sandy soil give a lot of fruit, but combined with high altitude, it's really uh, um, express much more floral notes and high acidity and, and uh, tannin structure. So a good, a good Malbec to give structure and, and a lot of life to the blend. And the last one also, uh, a vineyard that we planted, we start from the beginning at, at 3,100 meters, at 10,200 feet is Altura Maxima. At the moment, it was the highest vineyard in the world. I think it might be the highest Malbec in the world right now. And up there, it's very, very stony, and it's produced much more uh, mineral wine, a lot of red fruit, fresh acidity, and very challenging, as you can imagine, in, in this place. We were growing up there, mostly uh, quinoa or, or um, um, paprika, this kind of typical agriculture of Salta. But uh, we start with the vineyard, but we have to deal with a lot of uh, trouble up there. It's like it was an open bar for everybody up there, the donkey, the rabbit, the bees, the birds. So we have, we have really to, to deal with everybody up there. And uh, also we have frost uh, trouble uh, in spring, uh, most likely not as bad as France right now, but still still a, a big, a big uh, challenge for us. And also we, we have some hail storms. So it's, a, it's challenging, but a very unique kind of, of Malbec. And uh, this bottle of wine is, is a blend of those four altitudes. So that's all the kind of Malbec. Like I was, I was saying, very versatile varietals for us. 
and uh, it's really, really uh, um, make a beautiful wine, I think, very balanced between the fruit, the spiciness and the, the floral notes and uh, full bodied, but we always want to have uh, freshness and, uh, and some tannins to help to, to, to age the wine. No? It's been 15 months in French oak, uh, not too much new oak, only 10%. We are very strict on, on what cooper we're choosing. We want really good barrels, but not too much barrels really to respect uh, the fruit. And also something important for us, it's we have a very healthy weather up there, so we really can respect the, the, um, the viticulture, we are having a very uh, clean viticulture, very sustainable. And also uh, in Colombia, we have a, a big community with 400 people. So it's also part of our, our philosophy. It's not only about doing, doing wine, it's also to include all the community in our, in our project and to develop all the region ab around, uh, around us. So I think I speak. Wait no, a lot. you did great. That's beautiful yeah, wine. You know, uh, someone I was asking about putting the label. This is the, um, I don't know if you can see that if I pull back here, the Colomé State Malbec that you're drinking. And to put uh, things in perspective, when you when you go up to 10,000 feet, people may not put into context. Basically, that's the point where you get on the plane and the alarms go out, ding, ding, you can use your electronic equipment. That's my reference point. So, yeah, exactly. Uh, we're talking kind of high out there for people to one perspective. Um, so, um, Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I am gonna, right now I see that it is past the hour. I don't wanna, I know that we're in a tight time frame because our winemakers have to go. Um, I think everyone here in the panel, our fabulous winemakers, thank you for making the time. Thank you for Calvert Woodley for allowing us the platform. Uh, thanks to the embassy for sponsoring the event. And I wish you all a happy Malbec World Day and look forward to doing this in person in 2022. So thank you everybody. Thank you, Veronica. Bye, everybody. Happy. Thank you.